Welcome back to Math 103. This is video number 5 on fair division. We're looking now at a revised version of our example in which Xavier has increased his estimate of what the goods are worth, but his siblings still value the house at $400,000. So which of the following is a fair division and why or why not? The first scenario we're supposed to look at involves Xavier getting the house and paying each of his siblings $110,000 to buy them out. First, let's look from Xavier's point of view. So his share, let's look at this first from Xavier's point of view. So his share, at the end of the day, is worth $450,000 from the house, minus the $330,000 in cash that he pays out, for a net value to him of $120,000. To see if that's really a fair share for him, we have to compare that $120,000 to his minimum fair share amount, which is the total value according to him of the house, divided by 4, because there are 4 siblings sharing, and his fair share amount, his minimum fair share amount, turns out to be $112,500. Since he is receiving a share worth more to him than his minimum fair share amount, it is more than a fair share. If it had been just equal, it would already have been a fair share, but he's getting even more than that. This is certainly a fair share for him. Having established that he's receiving a fair share, we now ask about the siblings. Well, each of his siblings receives $110,000, and they still think the house is worth only 400000 so their fair share is still 100000 each. Thus, each of the siblings is also getting a fair share. In fact, better than a minimum fair share. So in this scenario, everyone is coming out ahead of their minimum fair share amount. This is certainly a fair division. The other scenario, which seemed so similar to the first one, differing only in which sibling it is who actually gets the house, turns out not to be a fair division. There are two reasons for this either of which alone would have made it an unfair division. Wendy's share is worth too little to be fair, and also Xavier's share is worth too little to be fair. So how much is Wendy's share worth to her? Well, she thinks the house is worth $400,000. She's getting what, from her point of view, is a $400,000 house. But she's paying out $330,000 in payments to her siblings, so leaving her a net value at the end of the day of only $70,000. So this is not a fair share to her because she thinks that she is entitled to at least $100,000 worth of value. Okay, so this is less than a fair share to Wendy. That alone makes the whole division an unfair division. This is not acceptable. We cannot allow Wendy to get less than a fair share to her. But there's another reason, which is also enough to make the whole division unfair, and that's to look at Xavier's situation. In this scenario, Xavier is just getting cash, so his share is worth $110,000, but that is less than his minimum share, his minimum fair share amount that we found earlier, and that's $112,500. Therefore, this is not a fair share to Xavier either. He would not be content with this arrangement. So for either of these two reasons, this overall scenario does not give us a fair division. Let's look at a new genre of problem. We'll see a number of these throughout the chapter. So Eve, Fred, Gail, and Hank are four siblings who inherit a large piece of land. The land is not uniform and has different features in different locations. A neutral mediator has been brought in and has divided the land into four shares, four parts. And we can call these S1, S2, S3, and S4. Now, there is nothing God-given about the way the mediator has done this. So the land is whatever it is, and maybe there are hills here, and maybe this part is near the highway, and maybe there are some nice streams here, and there's some other nice feature of share three. Uh, for whatever reason, the mediator has put down orange cones 
it's a good way to think of it, has marked off these four parcels with orange cones. Conceivably, they could have been marked off in some other way, but this mediator has divided the land into these particular four parcels. This is actually the foundation for one of our methods that we're going to see in not too long, but for the moment, we can ask Eve, Fred, Gail, and Hank to each write down their assessments of the value of each share. And they suppose they do so with the following results. So Eve looks around, and for whatever reason, the features of share three are more valuable than those of the other parcels of land. I know, we should all be so fortunate to inherit land like this. Right? So Fred thinks all four regions of this property are equally valuable. Hank has his assessments, Gail has her assessments, she especially likes share three here. And we can ask how much in dollars is a minimum fair share for Eve and which shares of the property are fair shares for her? Which shares could we legitimately give her as part of the settlement? Please pause the video and work this out before continuing. The thought process here is that Eve thinks the total quantity of land, the total property that she and her siblings have to divide up is worth $2 million. Some of her siblings reach different conclusions about the total value. That's lovely for them, but from her point of view, she thinks the whole land is worth $2 million. So she is, from her own point of view, entitled to one-fourth of the value of all the property, at least that much. So her minimum fair share is one-fourth of $2 million, and that's $500,000, half a million dollars. I know, we should all be so fortunate. Okay. So what counts as a fair share for her? Which of these four pieces of land count as a fair share? Well, she could live with share two, share three, or share four. Any of those would be acceptable to give her, and she would not be outraged they would not fall below her minimum fair share amount. We cannot give her S1. We cannot give her this share. That is not acceptable. And she would like to get S3, but she wouldn't complain too much. She wouldn't have a basis for filing a lawsuit if she received S2 or S4. A more advanced course might worry about trying to get her S3 because that's the share that she really wants, but that's not our concern here. Our concern is just respecting the words at least here in the definition of fair share. So S2 and S4 are minimum fair shares, and she'd like to receive S3, but any of these are perfectly acceptable from our point of view. Before going on to the next video, answer the following questions about the same fair division problem. So how much in dollars is a fair share for Fred? And which shares are fair shares for him? Which specific shares of the property are fair shares for him? Same question for Gail, and same question for Hank.